Hey everybody, John from Bike Fit Advisor. Uh, I always get a lot of questions about saddle fore aft position, and I've covered it indirectly a number of times through through other um, other videos that have touched on it. And I want to go over some of the means of uh, coming to the correct fore aft adjustment on the saddle. Now, the first one that always comes up, and this is something I've addressed in the past, is what's called the knee over pedal spindle. And this has to do with the idea that when you're sitting on the bike, when you have a, the crank arm positioned at three o'clock, you drop a plumb line from your knee and it should bisect, according to this rule, the center of the pedal axle. I've actually thrown this into one of my videos on bike fitting myths and uh, I do so because for a number of reasons. First of all, that measurement of the knee falling over the pedal spindle is actually more coincidental than it is you know, anything functional or truly useful. And the best example of this, as I've mentioned before, is uh, the time trial bike or a triathlon bike where the rider's knee is gonna be sometimes many centimeters in front of that pedal spindle and it has more to do with the seat angle. It just so happens that most road bikes, um, the way they're designed, for a lot of people, if it's sized correctly, you're going to, that knee is gonna fall somewhere over the pedal. And this kind of goes to actually the idea that this rule was used, what used to be used strictly, not as a bike fitting setup rule, but simply just to see if a bike was your size. And so people would, you would be able to, if you could get on the bike with your hands on the handlebars in whatever position they happen to be in, but, and you could adjust the fore aft so that your knee fell somewhere over the pedal, then it used to be such that you, you, would, you would say, oh, well, that, that bike was the correct size for me. Now, we know there's better ways to go about that, but, it's interesting that this rule has then been sort of turned into a bike fitting metric when in fact it's not. So again, I mentioned the, the, the time trial bike, the triathlon bike. I always think of like, think about a recumbent bike. Um, I know that's, that's kind of a ridiculous example, but an example nonetheless. And another reason why it's really kind of a, a debunked rule is that there's really not much agreement on where on the knee you're supposed to drop that plumb line from. Uh, you see, most of the time people say from the front of the knee, but I've seen and, and read descriptions where they're dropping it from the front of the kneecap, or they're dropping it from the front of the patellar tendon, which can be, in some people, such as myself, it could be a centimeter or more difference. Uh, some from the tibial tuberosity, uh, which is the kind of the bony protrusion you see on a lot of people. Um, and that can be many centimeters different sometimes, or at least a couple centimeters different than, um, than other portions of the knee. And, and frankly, none of these makes a whole bunch of sense on their own. I mean, you could make an argument that if you're, if you're truly talking about from an engineering standpoint and, and a, uh, the ability to put the most force through the pedal, why wouldn't you just use the center of rotation at the knee? Um, since this is where the force is being put through the tibia itself. So again, this whole knee over pedal spindle, unfortunately, it's still out there. People still use it. If a bike fitter ever uses it with you, you should run away. Or at the very least, it should be used in a very lightweight manner. And I mean that by just a quick, if you're just getting, you know, quickly set up on a bike for a demo ride or something like that, and it's a completely free thing. But if you're paying for a bike fit and you're, they're doing this, that's when you run away. Now it could be useful as a reference. Um, once you do establish your, your saddle position in fore aft via other means, um, Maybe you drop a plumb line just to see where you are in relation to your pedal and, and you can use that as, a, like I said, a reference point so that you remember where that seat is or, um, or it, you know, next time you get a, when you're getting a new bike, you have some, some idea for where you, you were balanced. And that brings me to the second method um, and, and I think the better, much better method to, for doing this and it's the balance test. I have done a video on this in the past. Um, I will link that above right up here. But I want to dig into this with just a little bit more depth. Now, real quickly, you can go check out that video. But on the balance test, we get on our bike, on a trainer. Uh, we want to spin at just a, a little bit above sort of an easy pedaling gear. Um, not quite to threshold, so somewhere in, a, in a, like a tempo sort of effort. You don't want too much force on the pedals, but you also don't want to be, you know, soft pedaling either. Try and match your typical riding cadence where you spend a lot of your time. And now as you're pedaling, what you're going to do is take both hands and you're going to lift both hands off the handlebars at the same time. And you're going to be looking for a couple of things. One is your cadence to increase drastically. Um, number two is to have, you know, have to bear down with excessive trunk support in order to keep from kind of tipping forward. 
Um, but the third and, and kind of most problematic and, and the most symptomatic one is having your hips slide forward on the saddle. So many people, it's, it's, it's small, but, it's per, but it does happen where when you, when you lift up, even if it doesn't visually look like they slid, you know, two inches forward, or, or they could also slip, you know, is, you know, just a centimeter, maybe even a little bit less, but that's still indicative of a, of a failed test. The ideal way to use this is to have already kind of established your reach, you know, where the bar position ought to be and what the bar height is as well, what, you know, the optimal position for you based on your mobility, flexibility, all those things. Because then when we do the test, if we, we can have a clear, clear understanding of what change we need to make. So now if you fail the test, what it usually means is that we need to bring the hips back slightly. And so we can bring the saddle back um, and move the saddle aft on the rails. Um, if you lift up your hands and it's very easy, like you, you, you do really don't have to do um, any of those things. Cadence doesn't increase. You don't have to, you know, bear down with abdominals too much. Um, and you don't slip forward at all. It might be an indication that um, you, you potentially spring the saddle forward, although that's actually pretty rare. And in cycling mechanics, this is one of those truths where there's a lot more downside to having the saddle too far forward than, the, than there is to having the saddle maybe a little bit too far back. Um, if it is too far back and you have an extra short stem, well, then you might know that you can, you can actually slide the saddle forward and lengthen that stem a little bit. Okay, so there's some extra benefit to this test because it may be able to teach you if your bar position is correct, and it also might be able to tell you if your bike is sized correctly for you. So first, let's address the bar. So let's say you fail the test and you go to move the saddle back. You do so and you take the test again and you fail again. This is often a good sign that now what's happened is you have, you either didn't move the saddle back far enough, which you know, is, is reasonably rare. It doesn't, usually doesn't take much to, to get that balance point correct. But let's say if you fail it again, it's more than likely to do now because the reach of the bike might be too long. So this is the important thing. Many times, if you're moving that saddle back, you gotta remember you're gonna have to shorten the reach of the bike. Occasionally it might be, it might mean you need to um, increase the height of the bar just slightly. And this is something best done with a little bit of trial and error. So on a trainer, where you can, you know, even if you're uh, not fastening the stem entirely, you can just sort of play with the height of the stem or changing the rise of the stem too. Now there are scenarios where this can show you that you're on the wrong size bike. And this is what I see quite often. Uh, people come in that'll have a pretty short stem on the bike and will take the test and they'll fail the test. And looking at their setup, they're also positioned on the rails with the saddle slid pretty far forward already. So now we're in a, in a sticky situation because we want to push the saddle back to improve that balance, but probably need to um, shorten the reach to the handlebars as well. But they've got already such a short stem on there or such a high rise stem that there's not a whole lot of room for us to go. And this is one of the most clear indications what, that you have the wrong uh, size frame. In situations where you already have a short stem, um, the saddle is probably, usually it's a little further forward and, uh, and you keep failing the test and we need to bring the saddle back, but we can't, we really can't. So in these situations, unfortunately, we just have to do the best we can do. A lot of times it's maybe we, maybe we change the reach or the height just a little bit and try and get the hips back a little bit. And, and sometimes that's enough to make it, make it workable, but it's just obviously not ideal or perfect. Um, and that becomes then the sort of the focus for the next bike whenever that happens. Another thing I would recommend is you kind of can do this test in degrees, meaning you can, you don't have to necessarily um, put it on the bike on a trainer and do this strictly where you're lifting both hands in a very regimented way off at the same time. This kind of, you can use the kind of the, the fundamentals behind this test to just see how you do even out on the road. Just, you know, if you, if, if you're out riding, um, and obviously not in traffic, something like that, but at different cadences, at different powers, you can kind of lighten your grip just a little bit as if you were going to let go and see, see how you feel on the saddle, see what happens with your hips. That can sometimes give you some clues as to, hmm, do I need to maybe you know trade out one spacer and go a little lower, or do I need to maybe go half a centimeter longer or shorter with the stem? And that's where you can kind of dial in those tiny little details as far as the position of everything. So take a look at the test, give it a try, and based on what it's telling you, 
I think many people will be able to find that they can properly position their saddle and then that in, indirectly you can also give you information about your bar position. So good luck everybody. Uh, put comments down below and check out a link down below to my new program on uh, saddle comfort on the bike. I have a new program that is going to be many parts to it uh, at four members and it's uh, yeah, it's going to go through all the ways we, we can to uh, make our seats more comfortable. So thanks everyone. I'll see you next time.